All right, welcome everybody to Advanced ChatGPT Tips for Accounting Pros. Practical examples of AI in accounting use today and some of the near term possibilities. My name is Hector Garcia. I'm a be better, best known as an accounting YouTuber. I do have a, a, an accounting practice, but I also create a lot of videos in YouTube and most people I know me through that. I'm also the founder of an app called Write Tool for QuickBooks Online, and I'm the conference host of a brand new conference that we created this year called Creative Business Models for Accountants. There's my email on the screen. If there's anything you think I wasn't clear on or I didn't cover, just email me any comments, questions, whatever about this presentation that you feel you want to communicate with me directly, there's my email on the screen. For those of you, if you're interested in coming down to Miami in October, I'm running this conference called Creative Business Models for Accountants, and I'm bringing in some big guns. I'm bringing in Ron Baker, Chris Doe, some huge creators, um, thought leaders in the business consulting, creative accounting space. And the themes are, you know, how are we as accounting professionals going to rethink our business models with the disruption of not just AI, but just big companies, you know, uh, offering accounting services and globalization and automatization. I mean, uh, uh, all, all that stuff. So if you're interested, there's the link in the slides and um, and there's a coupon code if you sign up July, but after July, it would be regular price. Anyway, let's jump right to it. Now for today's session, we're, we went, we're going to go through a really brief introduction uh, of ChatGPT so we can all be at the same um, level here. Then we're going to do some examples. We're going to do what's uh, what I'm calling answering tax questions, the accounting questions. We're going to talk about the relationship that, the, that I have with ChatGPT currently in my practice in terms of answering questions for my clients and my leads. Then I'm gonna go deeper into advanced transaction categorization because that's really where the big manifestation of AI and automation is going to be on, on sort of speeding up the mundane type of work. And then we're gonna go into some third-party apps like that are not specifically inside ChatGPT, uh, things outside like using AI inside spreadsheets or using an app called Write Tool to write uh, uh, report notes inside QuickBooks Online, or you know, we'll quickly take a look at Digits, which is it's it's a company that's building AI into the entire QuickBooks uh, uh, workflow um, for reporting and and querying data. Then we're going to talk about building your own chatbot, and that, this kind of bonus line. We'll, we'll see how how much time we have uh, to cover, and if we don't have enough, we'll go to a part three. We'll talk about your own chatbot. I want to show you what I've built in my practice in terms of. Uh, I'm trying to automate the process where people ask questions sort of live and and the bot answers questions live, but it's restricted on the information that I have given that bot. So we'll discuss that. And then uh, my favorite, uh, currently my favorite tool, my favorite uh, Chrome extension that leverages AI and ChatGPT is called Cider. So if I have if I have time, um, I'll cover that. If not, there's a link on the on the slides for that. And then we'll have we'll talk about any uh, additional resources and next steps that are available in the slides. Okay, so quite a bit. So we're gonna cover quite a bit, so let's get right through it. So number one, uh, let's, let me preface by saying there isn't one unified tool that's out there leveraging AI for accounting. Like, I couldn't tell you, like you buy this tool and it's all AI and it's, it's, it's all good and it's good to go. It, not really like that. AI or the concept of artificial intelligence is currently scattered across multiple tools that are out there. And we're still piecing these together. I think developers are still figuring out how all these things uh, work for accounting. I'm trying to sort of uh, compile my thoughts and, and, and my colleagues' thoughts around how, they, how, how they're using these tools. And that, that's what these webinars are. Now, in, in the, the, the focus on this webinar is going to be ChatGPT or OpenAI's platform. OpenAI is more than just ChatGPT, but it's ChatGPT because that's the one that's most tangible for most people because it's really easy uh, to access. Now, there's multiple ways to access uh, OpenAI's GPT. There's the new Bing chat, so you don't have to even have a chat GPT account. You just uh, download Microsoft Edge in your browser, and you click on sign up for Bing chat, and then you start uh, searching through Bing. Like, it's not Google, it's Bing. You search through Bing, and then Bing will do the regular Bing search, plus it would use, chat, it would use the GPT technology to come up with an, ans an answer. And that's probably... Uh, the, the the biggest thing that's now caused Google to 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 uh, to start exposing their um, their their AI platform as well. Now there's ChatGPT, what everybody knows, what what, what was, has taken most of the media space, and that's free. There's a free account. There's also ChatGPT Plus, which is what I use, 
which is 20 bucks a month. And what's really cool about it is um, it allows you to add additional plugins and plugins are really going to be the game changer in here. You know, when QuickBooks and Zero and Sage and all these companies have their plugins with ChatGPT, that's going to be the big game changer. They don't exist yet, but there's similar plugins. Uh, not, not similar. There's, there's some attempts to do plugins for, uh, with accounting, but, um, but when, when the big software companies do it, that's going to be a big thing. But uh, ChatGPT Plus allows you to do these plugins, and for 20 bucks a month, I think is a steal. And that's the examples we're going to be using will be in ChatGPT Plus, but it works also uh, translatable to the free version. There's also the ChatGPT Playground, which is mostly for developers, where you pay per use, and basically it's for you to test out the API. And there's, there's the, the OpenAI API, which is anytime you see a third-party app saying, we use AI, or, or, or the, all of a sudden using AI, they're probably using OpenAI's API, and they're paying per use. And that's a really important piece, because for software companies, it could become quite expensive to add AI technology because they have to pay per use, per text, per, per character, that sort of thing. Now, there's other AIs other than OpenAI. There's Google Bard, as I mentioned earlier. Google is going to start including AI in their searches. Uh, they're currently beta testing it. You can apply for that. There's Facebook Llama, which you can apply for access. And apparently, Facebook Llama might end up being op open source, so many people will be able to contribute to that. There's one called Claude and Trophic that works through Slack. That's kind of interesting as well. There's also a Hugging Chat, uh, which is a GitHub open source um, ChatGPT LLM type model. And also, uh, if you see the link in, the, in the, the last one there, there's a whole bunch of small independent LLMs of other companies trying to imitate a ChatGPT and large language models, all the different small LLMs. So, so ChatGPT, Google Bard, and Facebook Llama, those are the ones that uh, kind of like the, the, uh, are mostly talked about, but all these small ones, Vicuna, Fast Chat, Wizard LM, Alpaca, Guanaco, Koala, these are all the little ones, the little developers creating this uh, sort of mostly open AI type pl platforms that you can actually test them in this, in this page. So I wanna make sure that you, like, most important, you, you know, the, the links in this slide contain a lot of useful information. Now, let's talk about really quick about some of the limitations that ChatGPT has. So when you when you log into ChatGPT, first thing you will but well, you won't notice that first thing. But one of, one of the things you may notice, especially as it starts giving you answers, is that the data has been trained up to September 2021. So anything new that happened after September 21, uh, it doesn't have uh, access to that. So if if you're asking for like current events and that sort of thing, um, it won't give you that answer. However, if you if you have the plus version and you turn in, you turn on the plugins. And, and then every time you create a new chat, you browse with the Bing search, basically opens up the search. Then you can get, basically opens up to the, to the world of current events and you can get information uh, past September, 2021. So, but ChatGPT has been trained up to September, 2021. So it would have to find a website that has new information. And then with the previous training on how to read language, it will read the new web pages, new, new sites or whatever, and then it will deliver some mixed information, some from the core training and some from the web searches. And you can specify when you, even, even when you turn this on, you can specify, hey, I want this information to come from the core and this information to come from a search. And we'll do a specific example of that, which will basically uh, give you a great understanding of how these two things work in conjunction. The other really important information about ChatGPT, and this is like the number one thing that accountants, um, accounting professionals email me about after I do any of these webinars, which is how does security work with this? Like how, how is, is it's my client's data safeguarded, et cetera, et cetera. Like I cannot give you a specific uh, answer as to like, this is, you know, this is the, the exact uh, security protocols that they use because I don't know any of this information. I don't know how much of that stuff is public. But one thing I do know is that the social, the sort of contract you have with, with ChatGPT, with OpenAI is, if you save your history, so that means you're, you're chatting with it, and you uh, decide to save it, you decide to have a history of that, it can use that data to train uh, its own model. Whereas if you turn that off, it won't use the data to train the model. So that's sort of the, the, the agreement that we have with ChatGPT, which is we turn on the history, they can use the data, we turn off the history, they cannot use the data. The problem is if you turn off the history, you're gonna have to be saving copy and pasting the results somewhere else because when you log out, log back in, information won't, uh, won't be there. So that's kind of uh, the trade-off there. The other thing 
that is important is there is also a phone app. Um, the phone app is not as powerful. You could use a phone app. It's mostly a play thing for me. I think that um, if you want to actually do work with it, you want to work with it with the web version. But there is a phone app that works. It gives you the same results, but it doesn't have all the tools and the plugins are not the same. So just keep aware that it's mostly for now meant to be used on a browser. Now, I want to start with an example, and I, I got this. I got this email literally like a week ago, <laughs> and, um, and 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 I, and I, and I thought this is a great opportunity because this email is from a person that's not even a customer. So a, a random person from the web emails me and says, "Hector, I'm a single member LLC. I've been thinking about hiring my spouse to help me with chores. Do I treat her as a subcontractor? Can we deduct these payments uh, from my Schedule C? We file jointly." Uh, she'll eventually make $600 this year with me. Any comments on you know, how this could work and how, and how does taxes work you know, for married couples owning a business? So I got this random email from someone on the web. Let's, let's say they are, they are my client. And um, I have two choices. So choice number one, I can sit there and give a whole nuanced answer. Or choice number two in the AI world, I may have tools at my disposal to automate these answers. Now, there's a huge ethical question here, which is, you know, like when somebody's asking me a question, it's a personal question. Um, you know, do I have like like do I have the right to take that stuff and put it in ChatGPT and, and and come up with an answer? Does the does the client is it, am I am I mistreating my client's trust by not giving them the answer that's a hundred percent coming from me? But the, one of the challenges that I have with this is I get emails like this all the time. I get 20, 30 a day of random accounting questions. So like I'm thinking hard about how am I going to automate this process? So let's, let me go into ChatGPT and show you exactly how I manage that. Well, for, first of all, um, I, I did give a person a real answer, by the way. I, I sat there and I typed the real answer. But let me tell you the answer that ChatGPT gave. So the, uh, the, the, the question, so the, the question, so I basically came in here and I told ChatGPT, Help me answer this question to my client. I'm an accountant and an advisor. And then ChatGPT says, okay, what's the question? And then I literally just copy and paste the question that came from the email. And I want you to imagine a world where maybe you have you know, some AI-enabled app attached to your email, and then you, you basically you trigger automated answer versus manual answer, or something like that. Okay, and then ChatGPT gave this exact answer, which is, uh, right here, as for your question, IRS considers spouses in a single member LLC, a sole proprietor in a qualified joint venture when they file jointly, assuming both parties materially participate, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's, there's a long sort of drawn out answer, which is, in my opinion, a little bit too generic, but it is, it, it is a version of the answer. Okay. Now, what's really neat about this is you can actually go in there and tell it to expand upon it, make it shorter, or make it or make it longer. So this is the generic answer that we got. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go in and tell it, okay, uh, make this answer into uh, bullet points, okay? And then you take the exact same uh, basically body of information that it gave you, and it in, in this case it builds it into bullet points. And again, it, that would be up to you whether you want to rephrase it or not, but it's just, just an example of how not just one answer, you can get multiple versions um, of the answer and it kind of does the, the tax advice. Now, ChatGPT by default, anytime there's any sort of tax question or legal question, it'll give this sort of the same disclaimer that we use, that accountants use and lawyers use, please consult your attorney, please consult your uh, uh, accountant. That's because ChatGPT is being trained on the stuff that we as accountants and lawyers write on websites and we almost always disclaim that stuff at the very end. So basically it's sort of mimicking the language uh, that, that we're using. Now, when I wrote the answer to that person, um, I wrote something like, look, uh, there's multiple situations that, that could affect whether or not I would recommend you to convert to an S-Corp or put her on payroll or not. Uh, I have to look at all the circumstances uh, because I'm also trying to sell some advisory and that sort of thing. But um, What's really cool is you can, you, can, you can start, I think the best way to go about this, which is how I'm doing it is, um, I, I answer my question blindly first, then I go into ChatGPT, see ChatGPT's answer, compare it, 
and then try to improve my writing, my, my answering is based on the combination between what my instincts tell me to write versus what, what ChatGPT is sort of guiding me to write. So it's just an example. And um, if you go into the slides, there's a link in that, um, in that slide. Uh, actually, the link is not in that slide. I'm gonna go ahead and add it live. So one, one thing that's really cool about ChatGPT is you can share a conversation. So I actually, I can, I can click on the, on the conversation, click on copy link, and then I can share that uh, with other people. So I'm gonna go into the slides here. You see a link, uh, you should be able to see a link uh, to that specific um, uh, conversation in ChatGPT. So if you have a ChatGPT account and you click on that, you get into the conversation and you can even uh, copy it into your ChatGPT uh, and work on that. So that gives you a general idea what I'm using now for uh, sort of like gen generic uh, uh, tax and accounting questions. Let's talk about um, transaction categorization. And there's, there's two ways to approach transaction categorization. In part of one of this webinar that I did a couple months ago, we, there wasn't the Bing search option. So there was only sort of like one way to tell it, um, you know, ask it, what are these expenses? And now with the Bing search option, you actually get ex an expanded answer. And, and again, in the, in, the, in the slides, you can click on the link and you can actually go straight into that. Um, you can see the history of that conversation so you know exactly what I use as a reference. But let me go into um, ChatGPT and let's, I'm gonna start a new conversation. I'm gonna start a new chat, okay? And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna give ChatGPT instructions on what is it that I want it to do. So we're gonna start with not using Bing Chat and then using Bing Chat. Now I actually have the prompt already uh, set up up here. So let me just pull up my, my prompt, uh, which is my prompt here. I have multiple, I, I keep testing different prompts. And like I said, th that link that you have will have that prompt. So this is the, this is the prompt, this is the prompt that I use. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it in the, in the, new, in the new chat here. Uh, it's just new chat. I'm gonna paste it and notice what my prompt is. Let me zoom in a little bit. So my, my, my prompt is, I'm gonna give you some transaction details. Could you please tell me the merchant, comma, possible expense category, comma, and justification for this transaction. Now, when, I, when, I have, when I'm doing a Bing search too, I will tell it to give me two answers. So I'm gonna take uh, that part out, okay? And then I'm gonna press uh, send here. Let me zoom out a little bit more. So then it says, okay, give me the transaction details, the date, the amount, and I'll tell you, I'll try to figure out what this is for you. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my spreadsheet and just imagine that I have, um, you know, a couple of, of transactions from a credit card. Okay, and again, at the end of the day, like I've, I, I am a bookkeeper, I'm, I'm an accountant, I do this work. It, it would take me a very long time to come in there and go into uh, ChatGPT and paste every one of these things one by one. I, I totally get it. But what I, what I want you to be exposed to is the information that is capable of managing. And then when the software companies start bundling uh, this type of uh, uh, intelligence into the software, it's gonna change how all of us uh, interact with the accounting software. So I'm gonna paste these transactions, and in this particular case, I pasted five of them. We could start with one, we could do a couple, but I'm, you, I'm gonna do a couple, you kind of just get started like that. I'm gonna hit send, and then, it's gonna have, start analyzing things for me. So I went to the first one and they said, okay, this is the transaction you gave me. Okay, the merchant is this one. Okay, possibly ca possible category. This is the possible category. Okay, and then the next one, uh, GoDaddy. This is po possible category, domain and hosting services. Now this is not connected to your chart of accounts. It's not connected to your QuickBooks. This is not like telling you how to do the, the accounting work, but this is actually going through and processing a lot of information um, at the same time. Now, what happens? Okay, there's a uh, chiropractic. Okay, so if, if you, as an accountant, you see a, a chiropractor or chiropractic expense, you're gonna call that personal, not gonna be business. You would have to modify your prompt for that, okay? So, for example, if we go back here, I'm gonna go to this uh, prompt, okay? And I'm gonna create a new one. I can modify this prompt, and I'm gonna say, note, okay? if there are any expenses that feel personal in nature, such as health related or personal enter 
payment point dot out. So like I modified my prompt. I told it to use a different sequence of thought um, to start giving me those answers. Okay, so now I'm going to take the exact same information that I have here and I'm going to uh, uh, go back into chat GPT and I'm going to paste that and press enter and then it might start uh, pointing out what, what could be possibly some personal stuff and, um, and maybe in this one right here, this transaction is most, most likely chiropractic treatment. Um, health, this is a, indicating it's a health related expense. So it's like sort of like pointing out that there is some, some of these could be possibly um, uh, per personal. But what's even better is I, I can even go one step further. I'm gonna paste the, uh, no, not that one. So I'm gonna, let me paste the prompt again. Okay, you're gonna like this and this is sort of the advanced portion of this is I'm gonna create a new chat, paste that and I'm gonna say, give me the info in a table format, make the justification very short. Then I'm gonna press enter. Okay, so it's a brand new prompt. Take the same information and then go back into ChatGPT and paste it, okay? And now it's going to deliver the information in a different format. Okay. So really, really, in, really, really interesting stuff. Okay. And then you can teach it even further and start giving it additional information. Um, and you can give it more conditions like the prompt itself, the, the original question, the original instructions are going to be the single most important thing because it's going to indicate how you want ChatGPT to behave. Okay. All right, let's do an example with the Bing search. So I'm gonna come in here. Uh, let's, go back to, let's go back to the original prompt here. Actually, I have, uh, I have a prompt, I have a really nice prompt for that on, on, the, on the Bing search one. Let me just look for it. So I have so many different versions of these here. Uh, this is the one, okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna walk you through it. Let me just copy and paste it and walk you through it right here. Okay, I'm gonna start a new chat. I'm going to select ChatGPT4, which is, again, this is the paid version, and I'm going to click Browse with Bing. So I'm going to tell it that this is going to be a web-enabled ChatGPT um, a conversation. So I'm going to paste the prompt, and the prompt is this. I'm going to give you some transaction details. Could you tell me a merchant, possible expense category, justification for transaction? And I want two versions of the answer, one based on ChatGPT, two uh, based on Bing search. Provide the URL for the source of your answer. Do not return a separate analysis with the Bing search answer. Um, with the Bing search, if the answer is going to be the same. So basically, I'm telling it, hey, if 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 your first answer, ChatGPT, pretty much ends up being the same as as the Bing search, don't give me both both options. Just give me one. And I, I learned that through just sort of multiple versions of prompt engineering. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and search that. I mean, start that process, and then I'm gonna start. And, and, and I'm just gonna take just one transaction so we can analyze that one. So I'm gonna paste that transaction and then press enter. And then you're gonna see how it analyzes this one, which is really cool. Okay, so, so it, it starts with using my internal knowledge. So it says, it appears that this could be a potential restaurant uh, named Canaima, Venezuelan restaurant in Doral. The possible category could be travel, or it could be food, food and dining. Okay, so it gave me the first answer. Then it says, Hey, I went, um, I went to use the Bing search tool, okay? And this is pretty interesting, and this happens sometimes. I goes, hey, I want to confirm you want me to proceed based on transaction details, but it seems like it might be the same information provided. I have 70% confidence that the sort of the first answer was good enough, and I didn't have to go into the Bing search. Let's see if we can maybe do one that... Uh, Let's do this one here. Maybe I, we maybe this will um, definitely spark a Bing search. Let's do the next one. Paste. Do the search, and then see both bears. Okay, so in this particular case, it did uh, search Bing as well. So let's see what um, what this is going to come up with. Give it a second. Okay, so there's uh, the first answer, which says it seems like this is uh, parking or transportation. And then it says, I went out and I searched the web. Look, this is the second option. And I actually found out that this is the actual address of this, of this, uh, of this business. And indeed, this one in particular raised my confidence level 
because I was able to find more information in the Bing search. So this is really, really cool because you're not only just counting on what ChatGPT can do on its own, but also it can use the web to sort of corroborate its own answers. We'll do one more and then we'll um, do another polling question. Let's grab, let's grab this one. Let's copy that and let's come in here. Let's do the next one, okay? And this was interesting because this restaurant's actually not in New York. Uh, the name of the restaurant contains the word New York in it. So I wonder, I wonder you know, uh, what kind of answer this would give, okay? Because it's actually a restaurant close to my house. Um, so let's see what it says, okay? So using internal knowledge, it says, look, I think this is Positos New York, which is probably a restaurant called Positos, which is typical common for a, a restaurant. TST is a payment processor, that's, that's toast. And then it says, look, based on, the, on my Bing search, uh, yeah, this is indeed a restaurant. It's specifically, you know, takeout pizza. These are probably the categories that you should think about. I'm about 90% uh, confident in my initial interpretation. So really, really cool. And again, um, I'm going to put the, the prompt here on the screen so you have it, okay? Uh, that's the prompt. And actually, in the, in, the, in the slides, there's a link so you can actually copy that prompt onto itself, and you can actually see how it constructed that prompt uh, in the process. While the polling question is up, I'm going to answer some of the questions. So one of the questions is, hey, why is uh, ChatGPT using Bing search instead of Google search? Great question. That's because Microsoft invested into OpenAI, into ChatGPT, and Microsoft has uh, a stake in a partner, the co-development partnership with, uh, with OpenAI. So um, Microsoft obviously wants to start reviving their Bing search, which has been dead for a very long time. People really haven't, it's never really been relevant. People never said Bing this, Bing that. People also use, always use the word Google. So this, I think they saw this as an opportunity to, to really stand out and be different than Google. Now people ask me, hey, what's the difference between uh, uh, ChatGPT 3.5 and 4? So first of all, as of right now, uh, ChatGPT 4, it's only available on the paid version. So I would say right now, it, you know, ChatGPT 4 is available on on, on paid and ChatGPT 3.5 is available on free. But the difference is ChatGPT 3 is about a year old and ChatGPT 4 was released to the public a couple, like at the beginning of 2023. 20, and it's, it's got much better answers, much better answers. And um, I mean, you kind of have to pay the 20 bucks a month and, and, and see both the 3.5 answer and the 4 answer to kind of see it, it is a lot, it is a lot better. Uh, but ChatGPT 3.5 is incredibly uh, impressive what, what it can do, the free one. It's 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 a uh, really profit, and 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 in terms of going beyond the September twenty twenty one date, it's just a wait and see. See if 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 they, they probably are training stuff up to more up to date data. I mean, the thing is that there's a difference between like it's been trained on how to behave. Like ChatGPT has been trained on how to behave, how to answer stuff based on everything that was out there up to September twenty twenty one. From September 2021 till now, the only thing that's really happened is sort of current events. Nothing has happened that fundamentally changed how people speak, how people answer. So like having, uh, you know, ChatGPT use the, the web search to just get updated with some newer things that have happened in the last couple of years shouldn't be such a big deal. Like you shouldn't um, mistrust uh, ChatGPT because it's um, up to September 2021. Now. If you wanted to interpret tax law or or tax law cases or whatever information about like tax that's like supposed to be very current, you're gonna have to copy and paste some of the new laws or have it search some of the new laws. And what's gonna be really interesting, I hope to see, really interesting is to see the 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 tax um, uh, software companies, whether it's tax research or tax preparation, use ChatGPT to sort of corroborate with you as the preparer. To let you know, hey, you know, did you look at this? Did you look at that? Are you sure this is um, deductible? That sort of thing. That's going to be interesting as well, I think. Very interesting. Okay. So let's move on to ChatGPT inside spreadsheets. There's actually multiple add-ons you can add into uh, Excel or Google Sheets. I like GPTforwork.com. It's one of them. I mean, not, you know, the, not uh, endorsing them in any way, but GPTwork.com.com. Uh, it's pretty good because it's both um, for Excel and Google Sheets. So it's almost like just a look, only one thing to learn. So I, I, I like that. Um, let's go into um, 
Google Sheets and show you how that works. So once you install um, ChatGPT for work, it's it's I mean uh, GPT for work under extensions. You'll see it right here, GPT for for Sheets and Docs. That's called uh, GPT for work. This one's not free. Like you actually have to have um, a, an API account, which you, you could you could create. It doesn't cost anything to create the API account into ChatGPT Playground. Okay. All right, let's let's go step by step. Okay, so I'm gonna go into uh, Playground. And it's basically platform.openai.com forward slash playground. Once you have a ChatGPT account, you go into the playground and this is the developer mode. And there's no code to write here. This is just like the developer account. Then you have to come in here into your settings and you have to click on manage account and you have to go into API keys and you have to create an API key. So once you create the API key, you can connect any of the third party apps that use that allow you to use your own developer API key to um, to 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 interact with ChatGPT. The apps that make you pay for their app, like the the any app that will pay make you pay 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars to use their app with AI, they're using their key. So it's not coming out of your pocket, it's coming out of their pocket because you're paying them. But a lot of these free apps require you to have your own key. So then you can you can pay. Um, uh, ChatGPT, and, and it's not that much money. Look, I'm paying cents, you know, for all the all the work I'm doing. So it's like it's not really that expensive. But you have to have your credit card on file with ChatGPT and create the API key. So long story short, once you create the API key, you load it, um, you load it into your uh, third-party app. Again, a lot of them are free, free third-party apps. You add the key in there, and then all of a sudden, you have the ChatGPT functionality inside that app. In this particular case, it would be through Google Sheets. So let me zoom this in a little bit. And the code here is GPT. Okay, so what's really cool is you do equals GPT, and then you do the prompt, and then the value would be what's, what's in here. So I can say the prompt in this case, and I can type it here, I can say, uh, please give me a clean version of the payee or merchant in this line of my credit card statement, okay? And then I do comma, and then the value would be that one. So just, just, just notice that what I'm doing is the same thing I did in ChatGPT, but I'm doing it inside a formula in the spreadsheet. And then I press enter, and then it goes out. I mean, this is not gonna be immediate because it is using OpenAI technology, it's going out there and it's and it's uh and it's cleaning up the payee. Now I can give it more information in the instructions. I can say, please remove uh, any data before a asterisk that is two to three characters um, because it rep represents the payment platform. And then I could also do, I can add, please add the city, state for city, state for this merchant and press enter. And then I basically completely changed the, the, um, the, the, the prompt itself and I did it all in line as a as a in, in a spreadsheet as a, as a formula and then i can click and drag this down and then it, this every one of these will go to open ai it will go to chat gpt and perform that query and come back and bring me that information and some of it it won't know the you know the the city and state um now what's interesting about this is this uh, this will not use the bing search version at least not yet at some point they will they will start allowing that um uh, I, I think that some some developers have access to that, it's called function calling, uh, but uh, I, I don't have access to like being able to do the Bing search uh, power inside of any API developer-based tool, but you start getting some, some answers, and I could, instead of saying, give me the city and state, I can come in here, okay? Let's go, please add the possible expense category for my small business. Um, yeah, enter. Then I'm basically completely 
I completely gave it a different a different coat. And I'm going to come down here and bring that down. And notice that I'm getting uh, different results, okay, because I, I changed the prompt. Let me just zoom in this a little bit more here so you can see it. So we got, you know, we got the name of the vendor. Then I got a possible uh, category, you know, and then we have all these different uh, categories. Here, I could also tell it, here, only give me three types of categories. Um, uh, I can say, here, only tell me whether it's, you know, overhead or direct or whatever. And then I'll start, like, sort of assuming or, or guessing what these things are for you. So it's really, really interesting the possibilities you can do here. Okay. All right. So next one. I'm going to show you uh, an example of how an app can use ChatGPT inside QuickBooks. Okay, so uh, full disclosure, I'm not doing any self-promotion here. Uh, this tool I developed, uh, I was one of the developers, it's called uh, Write Tool. And basically what it does is you have a report here in QuickBooks and it adds a button that says insert ChatGPT report analysis. So it just basically adds a little button inside of your QuickBooks online interface it has a button and you click on that and what it does is it takes the report that's on your screen and it sends it to chat gpt and also we masked uh, the name of the company so it's not so chat gpt doesn't actually have the, your client's name it would just say xyc corp like it basically just gives it a generic name but it does send the account names and the amounts that information is being sent and then you can create a custom prompt in this case we have a, a basic prompt like this is like the Thing, probably the best prompt we could, we could think of, but you can add your own prompt if you want to. And then it says, hey, I'm, a, I'm already an accountant. I already know the basics of the account. Can you just tell me if there's any strange numbers I should look at? And do this in 3,900 char 3, characters or less. Long story short is because the most amount of characters you can stuff inside of a QuickBooks report note is, um, is 4,000 characters. So I'm going to click on that. And basically it goes out there. It sends the information on your on your on your uh, on your report, you know, uh, account uh, amount, no company name, and it brings it back, and it's going to insert basically a narrative under the four thousand characters and push it right there in the notes of the report. So it's really cool, and this is like just an example of like how we're how it's beyond just going into a chat box and interacting with a chat with AI. I'm just showing you how this stuff is going to start looking like in the real world where you know, where ChatGPT is actually now interacting with the other apps that you know and love, like, um, like QuickBooks Online. So the, the, the reason why it was done like this um, is because if you insert it into the notes, then when you go and you print your, um, your report, okay, you, you get your regular PDF report, and then at the end, you get all your notes. Now, of course, as an accountant, you should read all these notes before you send you know, a PDF report uh, to your client with some potential random text, but it just gives you a really good uh, starting point to, hey, like imagine a world where instead of, uh, when, when instead of uh, sending your customers just appearing on a balance sheet, you have narratives and explanations and like already some starting work for your uh, customer to know what to look at, what categories to look at. And that sort of thing. So that's an example of how a third-party app like Right Tool is leveraging QuickBooks data and using uh, ChatGPT. Okay, and then the link to that tool is in the slides. It's a Right Tool that app. Okay, next one is a digit. So I want to show you this one. This is really interesting as well. So um, Digits is a is a third-party app that uh, that connects to QuickBooks Online, and uh, you can connect any of your QuickBooks Online uh, files to it. Um, and then you can uh, view a report. So I, just, I don't want to, not advertising for, for digits, but this is a, just give you a general idea where it is. Digits is just a really beautiful reporting platform that creates these awesome reports. And none of this stuff is AI. This is just like pre-programmed, just, you know, uh, report modeling, you know, for accountants to interact with their customers. But what's interesting about it is once you connect your QuickBooks to any third-party app and essentially all the data, right, all the data is now in, in a different database. It's like in the Digits database now. I can use their chat feature to ask questions about the data. So I can say, what was my largest expense in 2021? Or something like that, okay? Or 2022, whatever number you want to use. It's a chat box. 
you hit send. And what it's doing is, again, it's, took, it's taking the information on, um, on, uh, on, on the QuickBooks database and it's allowing you to, uh, to interact with it in a chat basis. Okay, okay, which uh, vendor I used the most or something like that. And then you'll stump it every once in a while, okay? I mean, like in this, in this case, I, um, I, I, yeah, maybe I, I spelled this wrong. Let me see. Um, compare my income from November to October 2021 or something like that. Okay, let's see if, if that works. Okay, and, and there it is. So uh, what I'm telling you, what I'm trying to show you, again, it's not perfect. This is almost also sort of like in beta uh, uh, stages as well, but you... We can, we can, with AI, we can convert natural language by having the context of the accounting data into like usable stuff that people can use. And this is using the core linguistic training of, of ChatGPT um, with the data, your actual functional database of your, of your QuickBooks file. So like, I, I, you know, so big kudos to Digits for launch, uh, launching this immediately and uh and bringing this out and you can try it i think there's, there's i think you can get the first free first free uh first first five clients are free so you can check that out it's really really cool so um so that's digits digits.com um the other stuff that i wanted to show you is is a chat box uh, chat bots okay so there's um contextual chatting that you can create so you can do you can upload a single PDF file using any of these tools, uh, PDF chat IO, chat PDF, chat doc. You upload a single PDF file and you ask it questions just on that PDF file. So imagine a world where you have um, a new law that came out. Imagine during the, the, uh, during the pandemic where these huge proposals you know, were, were being sent, the CARES Act was this huge monster document. You send that up there and you ask it, what is this, what is that? You know, what, you know, what are the exceptions? Right? And then you could really just interact within the context of a single document. Now, I want to show you the next level of that, which is uh, multiple context-based uh, chatbot. And this is something that I'm, uh, right now, it's, it's active. Like, I'm actually using it. I'm testing it with some, with some of my clients. And I, I'm using a platform called My Ask AI. Okay, so if, you wanna, if you're wondering what that is. And in this particular case, I build multiple chatbots. So... I built one chatbot called Category Bot. I built one chatbot called Firm Bot, one called QBO Bot. And basically what I'm doing is I'm training it. Like I'm, I'm, writing, doc, I'm writing things in document files and I'm saying, hey, if, if, if this information comes out, give this information. I'm doing just sort of like that if and then sort of database. So Category Bot, for example, what I'm visualizing Category Bot to, to, to be is, hey, for my employees or maybe for my customers, Instead of getting an email saying, hey, what should I categorize this? What should I categorize that? You know, could I set up like a bot that doesn't take any human interaction after it's been trained and actually give information to the, to the client? So, for example, say, um, how do I categorize a Home Depot? Okay. And again, this is not ChatGPT. This is my own. So, this uses the ChatGPT engine language modeling but it uses a database so basically it's like let's say an excel spreadsheet where i put the vendor name and i put the category next to it or or, or different options of, of of category so in this case office supplies retail or supplies you know depending on the specific transaction okay so put what about uh, verizon okay and again the the, the only like if i start asking some random questions that are beyond just like a category of an expense it won't answer that uh, because I didn't train it. So basically, and the training is like super easy. Like if, if I show you like how this works, like you would be blown away how simple it is. It just don't require any programming. You click on add, literally you click on add content. And then you literally, if you have a, like I have a, I have basically I have three files. One's called categories with explanations, with examples, and one's a bunch of vendor lists. And then you can basically have your whatever, whatever file, whatever file you have, uh, set up for that. It could be a doc file. It could be um, an Excel file. You basically just click and drag it into it, and within minutes, it's trained. And then now you can um, you can start asking it questions, and it'll start answering uh, from there. Okay, so I'll, I'll give you a an example of like something that I, 
what that file looks like. So I have this, I have 3,000 lines, okay? And I have a vendor name and I have a category next to it. And this is one of the examples of how you train it, okay? Now, you can say, oh, well, Hector, it takes you forever to build a database like this. Well, I built this database with ChatGPT. <laughs> I said, I took my standard chart of accounts, I took a category and said, hey, can you give me the top 100 vendors under this category? And boom, can you give me the top 100 vendors in this category? Boom, and I just went in there and I started building the database and I just started uh, looking at it and I built my own proprietary spreadsheet that then I load it into any sort of chatbot software. And then now, like in the very near future, um, my clients, I mean, I, have a, I already have a few clients using it. And they love it. It's not perfect, of course, um, uh, doing it. But you, they start having help. Like it's like having like a tutor right next to you. And of course, not everything is one-to-one. -one. Like Home Depot is not always construction expense. Sometimes it could be a personal expense. I mean, it's all contextual. I know that and I understand that and, and, and the human element and the constant element is never going to change. It's always going to be part of our world. But I'm showing you the possibilities. I'm inspiring you because I want you to think about uh, the possibilities. So like, don't get, don't get too stuck into, but, you know, but exception one, exception two. Like, okay, yeah, we know that. We understand that 100%. So that's my ask AI. Okay. So there's this app called uh, ChatGPT Cider, okay? Um, th there's a free version and there's a paid version like most of, most of the web here. And it's really, really neat because it's built into your browser. So I'm gonna show you how I use it. So let me, I'm gonna uh, turn off right tool for a second just um, so you know it's not the same app that we talked about earlier, okay? And it's gonna be, we're gonna talk specifically about Cider. So, Cider is this little Chrome extension that sits there and interacts with anything that's in your screen and it can use ChatGPT. Okay, so I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that. So I'm gonna go into banking and let's say for example, I have, I downloaded some, some transactions and I, wanted, I want to uh, inquire ChatGPT about one of these payees, but I don't wanna sit there and copy and paste this into ChatGPT you know, the way that we did it. So what this little app called Cider does is you select information that you want to uh, that you want to that you want to send to ChatGPT, and then you have these templates of different things you can do with it. I created my own template uh, called Expense Category, which no surprise, I basically took my prompt from uh, ChatGPT that I use in the example, and I I loaded it into the app. So I literally just select the text click on expense category and this in this little tiny window it does the it does the search for you now I'm gonna expand it a little bit more let me go this way and do that see if it gives me the information and there it is okay uh, no that's it let me just try another one I don't know why that one that should have just worked but let's see let's try that again let's try this one there it is okay so it says based on chat GPT it's public supermarket, it's grocery, food retail, and here's the justification. So I, I typically, I basically use the same prompting mechanism. I, there's a place in, in, inside the app where you edit this and you create all these little templates and basically anything you type, anything that's written, you basically select and it, and it, it has this little uh, pop out where you can pick any of your templates uh, to do that. So uh, we're here to the end of the webinar. I'm going to strongly recommend you go through uh, the, the resources on the slides. I've, read, I've done tons of videos on the topic. I've done videos, a deep video on tax research, like sort of using uh, tax court case research and that sort of thing. Um, I put links to all the apps that I currently know that are leveraging ChatGPT. I put, I put uh, uh, links to other things that are beyond just chat, things like recording and summarizing Zoom meetings or using artificial intelligence for, for graphics. I have links to uh, my YouTube channel, other YouTube uh, videos that are uh, uh, pertinent to this topic. I have links to databases of different AI tools, and I have links to uh, AI, an AI community that we have in Facebook where we chat about this topic, and some free courses from Microsoft and Google on AI. So uh, next steps is create an account, start brainstorming with your friends and colleagues, and be surprised about this world because it, embrace it because it's it's here thank you there's my email i'll, I'll launch the the last polling question while well, let's cp academy take it away
Hector, thank you so much. What a jam-packed hour of a webinar, and for everybody who is still on with us.